everybody, welcome to Brickfall. My name is Jack. Today we've got a Lego Batman movie set. This is the Joker Notorious Lowrider. The set is recommended for ages 8 to 14. It is set number 70906 and it has 433 pieces. Included are three minifigs, Batgirl, Harley Quinn, and of course the Joker, plus a wonderful build for this lowrider car. There's a few hidden functions, a lot of sort of gizmos or gadgets, and a lot of sort of extras built onto the exterior. And at least from the box art, I can't find anything with it that uh, I don't like. Let's check out what is inside the box now. All right, so not too much inside the box. We got three bags, two manuals, and a little bit of stickers. Let's start. Okay, so the set is done. The lowrider looks great. It's really, really big. That's one thing that stuck out to me initially. I mean, granted, this suspension system keeps it off the ground, but generally speaking, I mean, it's huge. Because of this massive scale, it does look great. I mean, the detailing for the car is excellent. The purple and gold and lime green color combination, along with those zebra stripe prints in the seats, is a very iconic look and really makes this build very flashy. The grill in the front is very simply built, but easy easily recognizable. And there's also that mold that makes up a golden chicken or rooster or something on the top. The back has a spare tire there, which is nice. It also works sort of as a handle to open up the trunk, but I'll get there in a minute. And I just really like all the gold detailing on the side of the car with the exhausts and the handles and everything. This is a vehicle I already know I'm gonna wanna have cruising around the streets of my Lego city. Now, I think the first thing to point out and what people were looking for in this set is its ability to uh, kind of lift up and down Remember, this is a lowrider, and the suspension system that makes up this car works extremely well. You can see that you can pretty much put it into any position that you like. It can be on its side or the other side, lean it forward or back, or just have the whole thing down. But I think that most iconic look where just the back is kind of low and the front is leaning up looks great. And what's wonderful is that it doesn't actually drag on the ground when you're driving it around like this. I thought that back trunk would be scraping a little bit, but it's totally not. And this whole function just feels very smooth and I think it was expertly designed. Well, maybe not expertly designed because I was playing around with this maybe a little bit more rough and what I like to do with these vehicles and I know certainly kids like to do is they like to sort of skid turn around and what I found out is on certain surfaces and if the wheels are also uh, not too dirty that when you do a skid turn it actually pulls the wheel off of the back which I found to be quite a big problem. Granted, it doesn't happen all the time and you really have to be applying the pressure in a certain way, but depending on how you like to direct your vehicle around, it can be extremely easy to pop your back wheels off if you're sort of skid turning. From this angle, you can see that the uh, wheels bow outwards just a little bit because the Technic pieces are just sort of loose to kind of keep that nice hydraulic function working. But because of that slight bowing angle when you are skidding around with the tires, and the tires also have to not be dusty. They really do need a little bit more extra traction. So granted, if this thing is rolling around and being played with a lot, the dust is actually gonna keep the rubber from the wheels not tracking quite as much. And you're probably not gonna have this wheel popping off problem but anyways, this was just something I discovered and I was kind of disappointed to see it because I really do like the shape of this vehicle and the suspension hydraulic function that comes along with it. If anybody gets this set and has a similar problem or just test it out or something and see if you get the same results as me, I am kind of curious to see what you guys think about this little mishap. But regardless, let me take a look at the interior now. We've got two new prints. They're on the 2x2 two two and the 1x2 tiles. They're zebra stripes. Excellent. I hope I see them in my 
more sets after this. And just behind the seats, we've got what looks like a gigantic sound system. Those are tile prints that show speakers. And you can also see those two little blue exposed pieces of Technic. That was intentional, though I wish it wasn't Technic that was exposed there. But when you lift up the trunk, we've got two well-hidden spring-loaded shots and those two little Technic pins act as the triggers. I love that those shots are well hidden and it's great because it's sort of like uh, if Batman is tailing the low rider, then the Joker has a pretty legit defense system. And all right, I think that is it for pointing out the details of the build here. Let's move on to the minifigs. This is the Joker, a totally redesigned character. He doesn't really resemble the other Jokers at all from previous iterations. He's excellently detailed on the torso. He's got dual molded arms, plus I believe those are tattoos on his arms because his flesh is white and the detailing for that vest has so much going on there with the stripes and even a diamond heart pattern there as well as little skulls and a tie just so much going on plus he's got a little chain for his purple pants and two wonderful expressions and a brand new hair mold that looks excellent honestly if we get that thing in yellow I feel like we could get some pretty legit Super Saiyan custom builds he comes with the bullhorn piece with the bang flag just like the original Joker that was produced from Lego it's the exact same accessory so I kind of like that it's sort of like homage going back to the very first Joker and uh, yeah I feel like if anybody has any complaints about this guy it's because he's almost overly done but if you want to talk about an overdone minifig we really have to move on to Harley Quinn she's got basically as much detailing as you could possibly fit onto a single minifig the printing for the legs and torso are wonderful she's got awesome prints that go all the way down the arms usually arm printing doesn't cover like the entire surface of the arm but she pretty much has that going on for her Plus, Plus, there's great detailing that goes down the legs and on the sides of the legs and everything is perfectly mismatched. She's got skates that mismatch with the coloring for the legs, which then flip flop for the different colors of her jacket, which then flip flop again for the different colors of her arms and her brand new hair piece has just got tons of alternating colors, even with the little rings for her pigtails. The bat piece is also exclusive just to her and she's got two expressions. This one where she looks a little bit disappointed or miffed is one of my favorites, I think from the the entire new Batman Lego movie wave. Now let's move on to Batgirl, also an excellently made figure. We've got dual molded legs, great printing to show those boots and the straps and knee pads and stuff like that. She also comes with that new belt piece. Her batarangs are yellow, which is a new mold color for that piece. And she also comes with a great looking head mold along with this ponytail, which is actually a separate piece so you can have it kind of waving in either direction or just the hair being kind of in a downward position. Also, Batwoman's face is a little bit tan. She doesn't have the lighter flesh tone, but a little bit darker flesh tone. Plus, the cape is extremely shiny. It's actually the same material that Robin's cape is made out of, and I think it looks great. So yeah, when you're looking at all three of these minifigs together, I feel like the only complaints people are really gonna have is that there's just so much going on for them. Putting them right next to sort of a classic Lego City minifig, and they look very, very different. So here we have the whole set together, one very massive car. I mean, the low rider really doesn't scale very well with uh, regular Lego city vehicles, but I don't really mind. I think it looks excellent. Let me know if you guys experienced that same sort of wheel popping off problem like I did. And for the price, I believe this is still a very nice set, regardless of this little wheel problem that I was experiencing before. Okay, that is it for this episode, everyone. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe, and I have left a link in the video description below if you want to pick up the set. And uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time at Brick Vault.